Hey guys, this week's episode of Basics is not only sponsored by Blue Apron, it is itself a love letter to quick weeknight meals. Blue Apron is a meal kit delivery service that's a great option for anybody who's trying to cook more, cook healthier, or cook more deliciously. The first 100 people to use the link in this video's description to sign up for Blue Apron will get $50 off their first two weeks. But we'll get back to that later. For now, let's get down to basics. Okay, so as far as weeknights, a great place to start is the one pot meal. I first posted this dish to Reddit like four years ago and it's stuck by my side ever since. We're starting by peeling and cubing two sweet potatoes, pushing those aside so we can peel, core, and dice two Granny Smith apples. You wanna use this or any other good baking apple because we're gonna be, well, baking this apple. So chop that up into similarly bite-sized pieces and we're gonna mince up some fresh sage. So there we go, we got the foundation. Now let's go build us a house. Into a lightly oiled, ripping hot, stainless steel or cast iron skillet, we are placing four chicken thighs skin side down. We've already seasoned the skin side, now we're going to season the meat with salt and freshly ground pepper. And then we're not touching these until they are deeply brown and pull away freely from the bottom of the pot. Are they still stuck? Well, they ain't done yet. Pace around nervously as we let the other side of the chicken get a little bit of color. But we're not trying to cook these through, we're just trying to crisp up the skin and we're trying to get some of this stuff on the bottom of the pot. Y'all know what this is. Fine. Right now it's swimming in a whole bunch of extra chicken fat, so we're going to drain off most of it, reserving about a tablespoon into which we are depositing our sweet potato and apple. We're sauteing these over medium heat for about five to seven minutes, again, not to cook them through, just to give them some color. And then we are deglazing with the good stuff, a little bit of bourbon. If you know what you're doing, you've got a fire extinguisher nearby, you can go ahead and flambe the rest of the liquor off. But this is mostly just for showboating, doesn't really do much for the flavor. To this we are going to add a little whisper of chicken stock, just enough so that you can see it pooling under underneath the potatoes and apples. We're not trying to braise this thing, we're just trying to eventually create a sauce. Add the minced fresh sage and toss around, let everybody get to know each other. And then we're bringing the chicken back to the party, making sure that the skin is not submerged in the liquid. And then this guy's going in a preheated 375 degree Fahrenheit oven while we toast up some pecans. Then once the thickest part of the chicken thighs have reached 175 degrees Fahrenheit, these guys are ready for extradition. I'm gonna give this a little squeeze of lemon, but I hope you can see how you can change this up to make it your own. You could swap the sweet potatoes and apples for root vegetables. You could change out bourbon for white wine or garnish with hazelnuts or almonds instead of pecans and add onions or shallots in the earlier stages instead of garnishing with chives. The basic concept here is to par cook your chicken by getting it nice and crisp and sauteing and deglazing whatever starches, fruits, or vegetables you have underneath. In that sense, it really all comes down to timing and an excellent exercise in timing is sheet pan dinners. In this case, we're gonna do a starch, a vegetable, and a protein all on the same sheet pan in the same oven. For starch, I'm going with halved baby Yukon Golds that I'm coating in olive oil, salt, and freshly ground pepper, tossing to combine, and then dumping onto a preheated sheet pan that I've had waiting in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 20 minutes. Placing them cut side down, this is gonna help them pick up a little bit of extra color, and they're going in the oven first as they take the longest to cook, about 40 minutes all told. That gives us 25 minutes to prep our vegetables, in this case, asparagus. I'm using the old bend to snap method, which after a Google search I discovered is a myth. So just cut these, tossing with olive oil, kosher salt, and freshly ground pepper. Then we're whipping up a quick sauce for our protein, in this case, salmon. So I'm gonna go with some crushed garlic, the juice of one lemon, which you might notice I pressed and rolled there. That actually helps the juice come out more easily when squeezed. A nice little teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a good glug of olive oil, some kosher salt, and freshly ground pepper. There are so many different directions that you could take this little vinaigrette, but this one responds particularly well to the heat of the oven. Next up, we're contending with our salmon fillets, which I'm just gonna make sure are free of bones. Fishmongers don't always get all the bones, so always give your fillets a little squeeze before generously coating in your vinaigrette. And now we're scooting the potatoes off of the side, which you can see have picked up some lovely brown color. And since the salmon and asparagus have roughly the same cook time, about 15 minutes, they're getting arranged side by side on the sheet pan and back into the oven they go until the salmon registers 125 degrees Fahrenheit at its thickest point. Now, if any element 
remains of the sheet pan dinner is undercooked. Just remove the finished elements, put them under foil, keep them warm until everybody is ready to go. Garnish with a little bit of parsley like I did if you want, and you've got yourself one super easy, super quick, super delicious weeknight dinner. Now there is a whole other strata of inexpensive, easy weeknight dinners that we haven't yet discussed, and that is pasta. So we're gonna try out Blue Apron's Creamy Pesto Cavatelli, and this is an excellent exercise in mise en place, making sure that we have everything in its place. Let me just read the directions here. All right, so we're starting by taking a zucchini, cutting it into quarters lengthwise, and then slicing into manageable mouth-sized pieces. Likewise, with a carton of cocktail tomatoes, we're cutting these into quarters, but it's a sliding scale based on what's a reasonable size for your mouth. Something that we're chopping down to sub mouth size pieces is garlic. Three cloves worth, finely chopped, and now we're ready to move over to the stove. Just gotta get everything off our knife here. There we go. We've got a nonstick skillet heating over a medium high heat. Into it goes a splash of olive oil, and we're starting with our zucchini tossing it just a coat and then letting it sit so it gets some nice brown flavorful facets while we negotiate our pasta. Boiling for, I think it said seven minutes. We got some color going on the zucchini, so we're getting that a little toss, admiring the flames. And then I'm deviating from protocol here and adding the tomatoes because I want them to get a little bit cooked. I personally like not totally raw tomatoes in my pasta. Then we're adding the garlic and some red pepper flake if desired, if you want a little bit of heat, tossing that until fragrant and then draining our pasta, reserving one half cup of pasta water. If you haven't learned by now, pasta water is the stuff from which dreams are made. We're adding both the pasta and the pasta water to the skillet, adding the little included pat of creme fraiche, and stirring around so those flavors can get to know each other, and that pasta can soak up all that delicious flavorful liquid. Now, just before killing the heat, we're going to add about a cup of baby spinach. We want this to just wilt from the heat of the pan, so give it a little toss, kill the heat, and then we're adding the pesto. You want to avoid actively heating pesto as that dulls the flavor of the basil. So we're just stirring that, making sure everything's incorporated, and most importantly, tasting for seasoning. We are then seasoning to taste, tossing to combine, and plating up for dinner. As you can see, Blue Apron once again saves the day with quick, beautiful meals featuring instructions you can follow and ingredients you can pronounce. And again, the first 100 people to sign up using the link in this video's description will get $50 off their first two weeks. I hope you guys try making these meals for yourselves, put your own spin on it, and see how lovely and fresh a meal you can make faster than it takes to order a pizza. 